univariate plotting with numeric variables. So what do we mean by univariate? Univariate means one variable. So you're looking at how one variable is distributed. What does distributed mean? That means basically how many scores fall at each of the different values. You'll see in a minute. But first, let me tell y'all a little story. I remember it like it was yesterday, my very first encounter with a real statistician. I brought him a data set that I had and asked for his help. So I emailed him the data set, assuming that he would use his statistical ninja moves and look at the data as an Excel spreadsheet and intuit the meaning of the universe. I guess I kind of thought like it was the matrix or something. Always look at it and code it? You get used to it. I, I don't even see the code. All I see is blonde, brunette, redhead. Instead, what he did was he plotted it. He plotted it. And I thought, that's it? You're just going to plot it? I can do that. I can look at a graphic and understand what it means. And you can too. 99% of what's published out there in the literature, if you were to have access to their data set and if you were to plot a single graphic, you would know more about their data set than they do. Because here's the thing, humans are amazing at visual pattern recognition. Amazing! So let's leverage that fact, shall we? But you really have to know what you're looking for. So let us begin by plotting the univariate distribution of variables. Oh, lots of technical words! I don't understand anything you just said! We're going to plot, which means to show the data in graphical form. Univariate, which means we're looking at one variable at a time. Distributions, which means how frequently each and every score in the data set occurs. And we're gonna do it for numeric variables, which are variables which are either interval or ratio variables. Simple enough, right? Boy, that helps a lot! So what kind of problems are we looking for? Skewness, bimodality, outliers, group imbalances, missing data, nonsensical groups. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do it with numeric variables. Remember, again, those are interval or ratio numbers. And we'll start with numeric variables. Height, weight, bank account, temperature, etc. So what are we looking for? Well, let me show you what we want. We want this. This is what we call a perfect distribution. And again, distribution means how scores are distributed. So on the x-axis, we have the scale of the score. So this scale, or this variable, ranges from about zero to about 40. And the y-axis tells you the number of scores that fall in that particular region. And so what we see here is that in the center of the data, we have the greatest height or the most condensed information. So most people fall at around 20 and far less likely as you get further out. Very few people have scores near zero and very few people have scores near 40. That's what we call a normal distribution or a bell curve distribution. And fortunately for us, most things that we study are normally distributed. Height, how many people do you know that are over eight feet tall? Yeah, that's what I thought. How many adults do you know that are less than three feet tall? Catch my drift. Now, how many people do you know that are about 5'7"? Probably a whole lot. So we have a lot of people in the center, around 5'7"-ish, and then the further you get out, the less and less people you know that have those particular heights. Fortunately, most of the time, most variables are approximately normally distributed, in most instances. But not all distributions are that pretty. Here we have a imperfect distribution that is close to normal but not quite perfect and that happens and that's okay. But now we have a problem. This data set has what we call outliers, which are a small collection of data points that are way higher or way lower than the rest of the data set. It's as if they don't even belong to the original data set. So why do we care about outliers? Well, they may mess up our statistics. Let's say you're trying to compute the average income in a sample and you accidentally sample Bill Gates. Well, we have computed the mean of the sample and it seems that on average, Americans are making $4.2 billion a year. That ain't right! 
And the problem is those scores may not actually belong to the population you're trying to study. You might have thought you were measuring the height of fourth graders, but you accidentally get a couple of basketball players in there. Now whatever conclusions you're going to try to make about those fourth graders is going to be off. The average height of fourth graders is six feet three inches. Yeah, right. Next problem is skewness or skewiness. Some call it skewiness, others call it skewness. Okay, nobody but me calls it skewiness. So if it has some skewness, that means the distribution is not symmetric. It's leaning to one side or the other. And what that means is we are more likely to have a gradual pattern of outliers in a single direction. Positive skewness means we have a pattern of outliers on the right side, and negative skewness means we have a pattern of outliers on the left side. And why is that a problem? Well, again, most statistics assume the distribution is symmetric and normal. And if we have skewness, our numbers might not mean anything. The mean, for example. And then there are much more serious problems. We call these zero inflated data, where the mode, and mode, by the way, means the most frequently occurring score, the mode is at zero. That's why it's called zero inflated. This is very problematic for data analysis. You see this? You'd better stop right now. The models exist to figure this sort of thing out, but they're super complicated. If you wanna learn more, check out this video. And in those situations, it's not gonna be okay to use mean-based statistics anymore. Computing the average of that guy, that ain't gonna make sense. And of course, there are other problems. We call this bimodality, which means that we have two modes. And remember, the mode just means the densest part of the data set. So what is the mean here? Uh, I, 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 I don't know. Good answer, and right you are. We don't know. And that's the problem. If you're trying to figure out the most likely score on a distribution like that, you're going to have a real hard time answering that question, aren't you? Or how about this one? Nine hundred ninety-nine kids? Are you kidding me? Yikes! That poor mother. So what happened here? Well, some moron, when he was doing the data set, found a missing value, and instead of putting nothing, he decided, oh, I'm gonna create a custom call called nine nine nine, which says this value was missing. And so what does the computer do? It treats that nine 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 as if it's a real value and saying that somebody has nine hundred ninety-nine kids. Holy cow! What do you think will happen to the statistics then? We computed the average of the sample and the average number of kids born to a parent was 222. Uh-oh. So to summarize, what are we looking for when we look at univariate numeric distributions? Outliers, skewness, zero inflatedness, bimodality, and coding errors, like somebody saying that they have 999 kids. So we like normal symmetric distributions. We like bell-shaped distributions because most statistics that we use assume the distribution is normal. In psychology, how frequent are normal distributions? Well, Misery, I think that's how you say his name, wrote an article called something like The Unicorn, The Normal Curve, and Other Improbable Creatures. Clever title, eh? And what he argued is that normal distributions are extremely rare in psychology. But I find his article a little misleading. Why? Because there are two questions you could ask about normality. Question number one. Does my distribution differ from a normal distribution? Question number two. Is my statistical procedure robust to non-normality? And what does that mean? All that means is if you do have non-normality, does it even care? Do your conclusions that you make based on your data set differ if you violate the assumption of normality? Well, that's an entirely different question. Well, it turns out that in psychology, most distributions deviate from normal, but they're also pretty robust, so it really doesn't matter. And once we start talking about modeling and the general linear model, we will talk about what we call a sensitivity analysis, which means you run the model two different ways, one where you treat it as if it's normal and one where you explicitly handle the non-normality and see if it actually makes a difference in the conclusions that you make. And one more thing. This drives me absolutely bonkers. It is very common in scientific articles to do what we call normality tests, where you 
Put your data through a number cruncher and ask the numbers whether your distribution differs significantly from normality. This is just ridiculous, are you kidding me? Because again, it doesn't matter whether it differs from normality, what really matters is whether your data are robust to violations of normality. In addition, these tests are super sensitive to sample size. So you can compute, compute a Shapiro-Wilkes normality test, for example. And if your sample size is big enough, any minor deviation from a perfectly normal distribution, the test is gonna say, hey, you don't have normal data here, dude. You need to quit. Well, that's just false if you ask me. So can you detect a difference between normality and your distribution? Well, that's just a stupid question to ask. What a better question to ask is, is this violation of normality actually gonna make a difference? And it turns out that the answer to that question is different entirely. Thank you very much. Rant over. So with that, let us review our learning objectives for today. Understand why we plot data first. Understand what ideal looks like for numeric variable distributions. Understand what the following problems mean. Outliers, skewness, bimodality, zero inflated, miscoded values. And understand how to identify each of them problems. Peace out.